It's something that depends on big... You're the speculator, see, yeah, you and yeah, I yeah. think differently. I think uh, of the possibilities, but I'm afraid to, p to put things in. When I see oh, but the dark, I always figure yes, the dark is, uh, as too big for me to guess at, you see. Yeah, to guess, yeah. it's, it's not much use in guessing particular things, but, but uh, you're different, and I would like to uh, discuss with you sometime how do you do that, because I'm really a little afraid to make it, specific it, guesses. background. I don't know. The way you, you kind of grow up. I don't know. I'm afraid to make specific guesses because the moment I'm making that guess, I can see seven other alternatives. Mm. And so since I see these other alternatives, I don't know which one to to piddle with. Well, I don't I, like I, to spend I, a lot of energy my, on one. My choice is, is very simple. I, I, I don't set any requirement that the answer be right. It's just what I'm interested That's to follow. That's the difference. That's the difference. That's the difference. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to find If I'm out. interested in... I'm trying, trying to find out. Not how nature I'll, I'll, could be, but how nature is. See, how what's uh, right. Well, I don't and think you'll ever find it, you see. I don't think right. you'll ever find it. I see. And your <laughs> idea is to find out what nature could be. No, what different no, possibilities. No, no, different what, what, I, what I think is interesting. Yeah. Even if it's wrong. Common ground is enthusiastically explored. But is it only shared experience and knowledge that forms a bond between working scientists and separates them from us, the interested layman, or even the artist? I mean, scientific fields are becoming so specialized and they're so varied. Are you really saying that you have more in common with, say, a paleontologist or someone in a branch of science, very far removed from yours, than you would with a playwright or a poet? Absolutely, especially if he's a good paleontologist. Because he's a good paleontologist, he's not just looking at old rocks. He's looking at the history of the earth. He's looking when he stands and he looks at his own fingers. And he knows it's got five bumps. And he thinks of how did it evolve with five bumps. It's got the same as the whales and so on. And we keep talking about the importance of the fact that the thumb opposes. Then we can start discussing, is it really so important that the thumb exposes? Or is it language that has been evolved? The system of symbols? Then you, or the size of the brain? This is a paleontologist. I can talk about this stuff. That it's close to his field. Dolphins have bigger brains than we are. They have a signaling system. And you get interested in that. And you start to discuss all that they know about dolphins. And you complain that the way the United States Navy has been doing its experiments is not right. And we ought to find out more about dolphins. And you go on and on. You talk, those are things of the day. They're just as good. But you can go on and on. When with with I talk to a playwright or something, I, I find, because I don't look, go to plays or something, I don't find it easy to uh, talk to them. Yeah. I don't get much out of it. Uh, I was going to say, this is because you can talk to scientists in other fields, presumably because you read the scientific magazines, presumably, and, and uh, hear the scientific gossip, rather than... You know. No. Because we don't have to have magazines or gossip. We think originally. We think of a new idea. We talk to each other, and we try to look at something from a new point of view, and we delight each other in a new point of view. And when you're talking to somebody else who's trying to think of something new, different, and he thinks, he's thought about the whales or the dolphins, and he has some little thing he's thought of that's a little different than the thing that you've thought of. And so when you're talking back and forth, he's excited by your point of view about dreams, and you're excited by his little observation that he has made about dreams, if he has happened to have thought about that. So the point is, and... Our backgrounds give us a slightly different point of view. I mean, a scientific background. Like I specialize in physics, to so say he specializes in paleontology. So his his information on dreams might be more uh, deeper, more evolutionary. For example, he might well, he can't. We don't have way of telling, I suppose, about the evolution of dreams. But he might know, for example, about other animals. He might have thought about whether other animals dream and what the signs are and all kind of things that I hadn't thought of. I can't make it up now because I'm not the paleontologist, but. I believe that, yes, I find always that a good man, uh, I take it all back. I take it all back. A good man, I've talked to good men in other fields. There's certain kinds of men in every field that I can talk to as well as I can talk to good scientists. I met a historian, or a writer of history, from France once, and I had a marvelous conversation with him. Moirois, his name was Andre Moirois. And then I met an artist, Robert Irwin, who's a very important artist in Los Angeles in modern art. And I could talk to him at the same depth of excitement. So I take it all back. If you give me the right man, 
in any field I can talk to him I know what the condition is that he did whatever he did as far as he can go that he studied every aspect of it as far as he has stretched himself to the end he's not a dilettante in any way but so he talked deep as far as he can go and he therefore he's up against mysteries all the way around the edge and awe and we can talk about mystery and awe that's what we have in common you are talking a bit about uh, these fallow periods when things are get very painful. After discussing working problems, it is natural that Feynman and Hoyle should savour that most thrilling pleasure of all, the moment of revelation. You try all sorts of things and you're hopeful about trying it. Have you had a moment when in a complicated problem where quite suddenly the thing comes into your head and you're almost sure you've got to be right? Oh, yes. That's I mean, this is a great... Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you try to figure out what the conditions yeah, were of yeah. that moment that you can do it yeah. again. Yeah. For example, I worked out the theory of helium once mm. and suddenly saw everything. Yeah. I was struggling, struggling yeah, yeah. for two years, right. and suddenly saw everything. And, and, and what, 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 what was the one afternoon? Scale. I can remember everything about it. By the way, it's yeah, psychologically yeah, funny. Yeah, you can yeah. remember the color of the paper you were writing on, has yeah. that true? Yeah, and yeah, the room yeah, and everything yeah. else. And uh, then you wonder what's the psychological condition. Well, I know at that particular time, I simply looked up and I said, "Wait a minute, it can't be quite that difficult. It must mm. be very easy. I'll stand back and I'll just treat it very lightly. I'll just tap it, and it'll say boom, boom, and there it was." So how many times since then I walking on the beach and I said, well, look, it can't be so complicated. <laughs> yeah. Tap it, tap, yeah. tap, nothing happens. Nothing happens. happens. <laughs> yeah. nothing happens. So, yeah. so it, the, yeah. the lights are great, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, the it, secret it, way, how, it, what's the that missing? It's that missing bit in the brain, isn't it? Right. Some, that suddenly lights up. And, yeah, and I have no idea. I yeah, thought about it because some, uh, some man suggested I think about that. Because if I could only figure out the formula for how, what condition to be in to get good ideas, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be much more efficient and yeah, more happy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I often paid attention to what the condition is, and I've never found any no, correlations no, with no. anything. And by the way, it's the delight, it's absolute ecstasy. Yeah. I, it's just absolutely wild. And how long did it last for? That, that how long did it last for? The, well, the, it's the, well, it's not very short. It, it's, it's a very big moment, and then three after days. That, yeah, yeah, yeah and three so days. on. Yeah. And then there are lesser pleasures yeah, as you see it, as you work yeah, out yeah, more yeah, things right, and more yeah, people yeah. notice it and but you the high talk peak, about yeah. it. But the high peak for about three days. That's right, yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like a, it's like yeah. a supernova, I suppose. Yes. No, that's 54 that's right. days. That's yeah. better. Yeah. But uh, I was going to say that it's the the hope of that kind of gold that keeps you going. That can keep you going through these yeah. doldrums, you yeah. see. Yeah. And that yeah. I think uh, what I learned when I was a child from my father was that if you did work a little bit at these things, there would be a time at which you'd get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to learn that first, yeah. so I'd never yeah. been able to, to do it. Yeah. And then afterwards, you wonder, why the devil was I so stupid that I didn't that's, see this? That's not only true of you, it's true of history of, of the history of the science. You can always look at a particular yeah. moment in mm. history and wonder why they hadn't thought of it mm. 20 years earlier or 10 years earlier, depending on the case. It's because we're dubbed somehow. It's most mysterious, this. It just means that however good you may get comparatively compared to... Um, apes and things. Apes and so on. We're still very bad at it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We're doing the best we can. Yeah, in the kind of stumbling. <laughs> it's <is> very good. <laughs> yeah. This uh, depressing and sobering thought. Well, it's been fun. <laughs>